Hi guys, you join me just about a major issue changing the brake discs on my Subaru. As you can see, I've got the brake caliper on my bench and it has a stud stuck in the caliper and I've broken a bolt which holds it onto the hub. So let's see how I got myself into this situation. Now I haven't done a video for a while and that's because the Subaru has been sat in the garage again for six months. So back in October, uh, the battery started failing on it and I knew I wasn't gonna use it over winter. So I put it in the garage and forgot about it again for another six months. So I've put a new battery on the car and I've got the opportunity to do another track day at Goodwood again. So I pulled the car at the garage, um, I had it around it and I found the brake discs were cracked, which I'll show you now. So here's one of the discs I've taken off. See that on there? The crack. There's loads and loads of little cracks on the disc. Now these discs are about 10 years old. So they have seen some use. Well, they haven't done many miles, but they've seen a lot of track days. So that probably hasn't helped. Now, I was aiming an iron whether to change the discs or not, because they're only very slightly cracked, but they're going to need to be changed anyway, so I decided I'd go for it and get new discs. I've already had spare pads, and I've got some braided hose as well, which I wanted to install in the car, which brings us on to where we are now. I went to take the caliper off, snap the bolt. Now, I've also got a few other things I'm going to put on the car. Uh, I've got a fuel filter, so I'm going to change that. And I've also got some camber bolts. So I'm going to show you the tyres from the last track there. And you can see they're not worn very evenly. So I'm going to add a bit of camber to the front of the car, which should give us a bit more grip. And the tyre wear should even out. So this is the front passenger side tyre. It's just at the most abuse. As you can see, this end has got a lot hotter than this end. As you can see, the dimples on the side. They're not that worn that much, and these ones are nearly all gone. So we will put some negative camber on the car, which would bring the tyres, push them in slightly, like that. I don't know if you can see that. And then, um, so when we go around the corners, it should balance out and give us more grip so we can go around the track a lot quicker than we were. This is one of the camber adjustment bolts I'm going to be using. As you can see, it's, it's cam-shaped on that shoulder there. So when you rotate the bolt, you can adjust the camber on the hub. So we're going to whack them in and we're uh, going to give the car some negative camber. As you can see, I've put the camber bolt in the bottom and there's the top one. I've loosened the top one off. So when I turn this, it will move the hub in and out. So we want maximum camber, so I'll adjust it so it moves towards the car the most lock it off there and actually give us some more camber and some more front end grip so an update on the caliper as you can see two shiny new bolts and there's no stud stuck in them so i took it to my friend's workshop and we welded a nut onto the stub which was left over as you can see here so every time we try to remove the uh broken stud it just kept breaking the nut off so i ended up drilling tapping it so i drilled tapped it and as you can see some brand new bolts as i just said so we're going to put them on the car and we get the uh, brakes bled so i'm going to be using this dot 4 rbf 600 racing brake fluid in the subaru in the past i have run this which is an ate type 200 racing brake fluid so I thought I'd give the uh, RBF 600 a try. Let me know in the comments what you guys use. So there we go, caliper is back on. The new disc, new pad, braided hose. Now all I need to do is bleed the brakes. I'm gonna use this suction device to bleed the brakes. And then once I've done that, I need to do 250 miles of gentle driving to bed it all in, apparently. So I've been driving the Subaru around gently for a few days now. 
too bad the brakes and I've noticed the steering wheel is very and I'm in a straight line very very slightly out so the alignment's been is slightly off now the only thing I think that is is obviously we've done the camber bolts as well and where I've done it by eye I haven't actually set them up with a camber gauge I imagine one side has got more camber than the other so what I'm going to do I'm going to use this camber gauge which I've just brought if you can see that I'm going to put that on and then set the camber up maximum I can on each side and hopefully that will sort the alignment out. So this is the camber gauge, you can see it's just a spirit level. I've already done the other side and I managed to get an extra one degree of negative camber. So we do this side and I'll show you how it works. So there's a magnet on there, flick that on there and then you can see, there we go. Now it doesn't matter if the car's flat or not because there's an adjustment on there. So if I adjust this, we can bring that to zero. There we go. Now I'm going to adjust the camber bolt to give me the maximum again. So then hopefully it'll all line up with the other side. So as I turn the bolt round, we should see. There you go, we're going the wrong way. We're going positive camber. So if I keep bringing it round, there we go, a little bit past zero. I think that's the maximum there. So we're just under one degree of extra camber from what we were. Let me just tweak that back around the other way. Sorry, there you go. So slightly more camber on this side than the other side. So now we've adjusted them up, hopefully the car will be aligned a lot better. So as you can see, I'm out on a test drive making sure the alignment has sorted itself back out. So as I said, we've got one degree extra on the passenger side of negative camber, and I managed to get another half a degree of camber out of the driver's side. Now I feel like the alignment's sorted itself out. I say it wasn't massively out, so it must have uh, made that difference. Now, if I learned anything from this, when you mess around with suspension components, make sure you set them up properly, not by eye, just for I know that'll do, because I say, <laughs> if you want to do it properly, obviously I did the job twice. So, um, I don't think I've mentioned what discs and pads I'm using. So the pads I'm using are performance friction. I've always used performance friction, because uh, in the past I've gone for a set of brake pads on one track day, and that was that. Ruined my day, only half a day on track. So these performance friction ones I just took out did seven or eight track days and they still had probably 30% of the pad left on them. So really good. So I added a spare set of them, like I said, so I whacked them on as I was doing the discs. And the discs I got are from Godspeed Brakes. So they've had some really good reviews and they look pretty cool, so I thought I'd give them a go. So as I said, the track day I'm doing in a few weeks and then after that I'm planning on taking the gearbox out of this and getting the flywheel skimmed as the flywheel is warped so when I pull away the car judders and also when I downshift and if I don't match the revs it judders again which is really annoying it's a job I've been putting off for ages so I'm gonna def get it done so make sure you subscribe and I will film all of that of uh, ripping the gearbox out and hopefully putting it back in right so uh, yeah make sure you subscribe and uh, thanks for watching I'll see you on the next video